everyone, it's LS, and this is going to be another speed VOD review. This time, the Flash Wolves versus G2 Esports tiebreaker match to decide who will be joining Afrika and getting out of Group A. So, obviously, a pretty tense, <clears throat> tense moment, tense game. And so far, the bans G2 Esports banning away Olaf and Zaya, and Nocturne and Camille being banned away by the Flash Wolves. Seems like I have to lower the speed. Been having some issues with times two today. And Sivir now being banned away after Nikali was banned away by Flash Wolves. And Flash Wolves right now hovering Yasuo. I'm extremely doubtful that we'll end up actually seeing that. Urgot ends up being selected. I would almost always rather have Atrox, a Atrox. I've been very vocal about that throughout the entire tournament. I know that some people, it, it almost really does just seem like preference. Uh, Alistar locked in for G2 Esports as well. And red, uh, red side Alistar, I actually think, is a little bit weaker than blue side Alistar because it, it, it's easier to control the vision around mid lane um, when you're blue side uh, for Flash Wolves uh, to protect against Alistar ganks than it is uh, if you're up against a blue side Alistar. I think that the roams are much more telegraphed due to the nature of the, the lane, so I think that uh, red side Alistar is a little bit weaker, but it's okay. Uh, Tom Kench locked in for Flash Wolves, and Talia locked in as well, so that's most likely going to be a Talia jungle. So no Heimerdinger ban, Heimerdinger being selected right now. So obviously, G2 Esports, when they're locking this in, they must assume that uh, Flash Wolves has something prepared against the, uh, the Heimerdinger. Um, so right here, uh, Jin now being banned away by G2. I can't imagine that Jin's actually a good pick against Heimerdinger. So I'm a little bit surprised, but maybe they're just thinking that Flash Wolves is going to go for Jin Tom Kench. And now Varus being banned away as well. And Varus, I guess, is a little bit more interesting. Um, I think that Varus, because of his Reign of Arrows and this Q and stuff, has a little bit more flexibility than a Jin. And Aurelia now locked in for G2. So Aurelia, always going to likely just be going mid here. I don't think that we're going to get any shenanigans with a swap. Mordekaiser finally picked in for Flash Wolves. So Mordekaiser is good against Heimerdinger. Um, the, the issue, though, is that if they had intentions to pick Mordekaiser and not ban away Heimer, he should have been paired with Alistar, not a fucking Tom Kench. Tom Kench is so bad against Heimerdinger. Like, on, on paper, he's good. On paper, he can QW the turret and spit it back out. He can, you know, do all this other jazz. But realistically, Alistar Mordekaiser is such a better combo because it, it denies any support except for Thresh, which I, you're not gonna you're not gonna take Thresh if you're a G2 esports. Like for instance, if the picks went like this, if uh, the pick went uh, Alistar and then they go uh, A Aatrox and Gragas or something, and then right here. You go uh, Talia, and so you go Talia, and then you go, you could even go Talia, and then, well, can you go Talia Rise? Uh, I guess not. Oh, you can go you can go Talia, and then you can go Urgot. You can go Talia, Urgot, right here, and then they go Heimerdinger. And then it goes to the next uh, the next phase, right? They do the same exact bands, and then they pick uh, Aurelia, you go Mordekaiser, and then Rise. That would be fine. That should be the way that this unfolded. Um, they clearly don't have enough practice, and I, I am doubtful that Flash Wolves was able to reach out to like the Korean Heimerdinger specialists, um, because if you have Alistar, and let's say that G2 Esports still hasn't picked their support yet, and they end up picking it right here, and maybe they actually save Aurelia for right here, um, the only support that would actually be good against Mordekaiser Alistar is Thresh, because when Alistar goes for his combo, Thresh does the flay, and it denies the combo, but Mordekaiser and Alistar is still going to get the Ws off. This is actually a topic that I, I can talk a lot about, because I, I, I have hundreds of games on both Tom and Mord um, against... Like, I, I, I ran into the Heimer specialists in high, uh, Heimer Marker in solo queue so many times, and I got to play against them in bottom lane, um, both as Tom support and as Mord, so... Um, 
I actually feel really comfortable talking about these matchups. Nautilus sucks. <clears throat> Nautilus is bad because he doesn't do anything and he just gets shoved under. It Like, he can't reliably land a Q because it requires Heimerdinger to mess up. It, it just doesn't make any sense why you would pick Nautilus. Even if you end up pressing R on Heimerdinger, he's going to have Zanya's Hourglass later on, and then he's just going to press RQ, or is it RW or whatever? I don't even know. Fiddles... Uh, Karthus bot versus Heimer is actually good as well. Uh, Heimerdinger can't really do anything, but it does become a knife fight when you include the supports. Flash Wolves looking for some sort of early aggressive invade. Also, interesting that Mordekaiser is going Doron Shield. I don't think that you have to do that. I think against uh, Heimerdinger, uh, you, you take Teleport with Guardian on Mord. And also, I think that Sword Art should not have Glacial Augment. I think that they should actually just go Double Guardian. Like, double Guardian with Double Targon, and Mordekaiser has Teleport. And basically, you just play for Lane Kingdom against the Heimer, and you get massive CS leads, and then you use the first dragon to get the turret. That's what you should be doing against Heimer. Um, so I, already, I, I feel like Flash Wolves actually doesn't have any experience in the matchup. Yeah, this is... Not looking like they know what they're doing. That's okay. All right, so Perk's taking a little bit of a heavy trade. And so far, uh, we, we look at the minimap and whatnot. Uh, I, th I feel like Gragas actually has quite a good opening, so Yankos does have some stuff going for him. The heal on Mordekaiser is really nice. This is also one of the reasons that you uh, you can have Tom Kench be good against Heimer. Mm, he shouldn't have activated the W. Doesn't really matter. So right now, Hyarnan and Wadded are being shoved in. This could be uh, being done better. This is this is actually the scary spot. When when Mordekaiser... So, uh, I, I didn't see what Mordekaiser is skilled. I don't think he has Q. He should have two points. Okay, he's an idiot. Um, you you want to just skill two points in W. You don't want to have Q. There's absolutely zero reason to have Q right now. You just keep using the amplified healing and the damage from the W because it's how the entire lane is decided. This is a good gank uh, by Yankos, because offsetting uh, the pressure by Flash Wolves... Like, so, here's the thing that I talked about, right? The reason that you take Teleport is because you get to level 3 with W, and then you just use the Enhanced Healing, and Heimerdinger runs out of mana. And even though Heimerdinger has Teleport, Mordekaiser's sustain post-Teleport is greater than anything that Heimerdinger can actually dish out. So if they're running Double Guardian, and they, they trade at different intervals, it's so difficult for Heimer to actually poke through Mord's W. And then at level 4, you get the Q on Mordekaiser. Level 5, you get the third points in the, the W. And then you obviously end up maxing W first. Um, because you have the Targon and you're accelerating the gold game between you and your teammate, you both go into Targon tier 2, and it makes it impossible for Heimerdinger to shove you out of the lane. After that, you can actually most likely just go into Boots tier 2. Uh, so I guess in, in this situation, maybe you just go Mercury Treads first. So you go Targon tier 2, uh, or you go Targon... Uh, plus Merc Treads as Mordekaiser down in bottom. Tilia is naturally going to have an advantage against Yankos' Gragas in terms of uh, lane pressure and control, and then Rai should always be able to hold priority on the right-hand side, and they can use this to capture the Ocean Drake actually relatively early when Mordekaiser hits 6. So an early Ocean Drake is actually really good uh, for some of these matchups for the sustain, especially if you can get it pre-10 minutes. And then you just use the Ocean Drake, depending on how mid lane is looking, maybe you use a mid lane, or you just pull it bottom lane and you put Heimerdinger behind. Um... This is, this is really fun that I, I can talk so much about this uh, really quirky matchup. Um, it, it's not very often that you get a very unorthodox matchup, um, and so it, it's very fun for me to be able to talk about.
Yeah, I see that W. W is so strong. Now imagine if Mordekaiser had teleport and he could already just TP back into the lane with Targon tier two. It would just be so good. They would have to never give up pressure. That was a baddie by Betty. Should already W. Now I'll move into the back line and press W. What are you doing? I'm tilting. Oh, I'm tilting. <laughs> Alright, so they're going to recall. Yeah, the, the W from Mord is really, really good. Yeah, there's the Mercury Treads, but there's no Targon, so there's not getting any acceleration. I think the atomization is just really poor. Really sucks. And then also, everything's like delayed. In terms of pressure, Hyarnin should never be able to have the lane state in this position, and the bottom tier 1 turret should be taking a lot more damage. And then Mordekaiser should also be getting a lot more, um, also, I, th this is, this is not good. Uh, the runes suck as well. Um, but anyways, uh, I mean, the, the, the runes suck because you don't want to go into the, is it the domination tree? Uh, as Mord in, in this particular matchup, you want everything to just be focused on sustain. Uh, and utility. I like what uh, Mujin's doing right now. I think that it means that Betty's gonna hit six and it does look like that Betty's gonna hit six. So they're gonna use this uh, this timing to try to get the dragon, but the problem, or actually, no, this is entirely anti-synergistic. Rise needs a recall and so Mujin comes down into bottom even though Rise needs a recall. So there's actually not a pressure relief in mid, so I don't know what Mujin's doing because even if you get Mordekai's or six here, uh, Perks has way too much control, and even though he doesn't have any mana, as long as Gragas is in close proximity, you can't actually get Dragon. Okay, and now G2 is actually going to get the, the Drake first. This is really, really, really sad. Infernal Drake coming up next. That would be super, super, super big for either team to get. Ah, this Mordekaiser hurts to watch. Doesn't, doesn't know how to play it. So already, um, I, I feel like uh, because because the the Mord is falling behind, it's not something that you want to have happen. And then also, reliably, it, it's very difficult for Mordekaiser to actually get a ghost um, because the only person that you're going to be able to likely get a ghost on is Perks. But even that's going to be very difficult because Perks is so slippery inside of team fights. Because if you cast it on Wonder and he has his ultimate going, uh, you're not going to have a good time. It is unlikely that you're going to be able to get onto Yarnin with a ghost, and even then, a Heimerdinger ghost is not really that valuable. Flash Wolves isn't going to be able to get this turret. I don't know why Mujin keeps coming down into bottom. I think Mujin's pathing is actually really, really bad. This game. He keeps eating golems, even though if Mordekaiser and Tom Kench are playing correctly, they can definitely integrate uh, roots into where Mordekaiser keeps getting golems, and this actually really helps with Mordekaiser establishing a two-level lead down in bottom. You can definitely get level 10 versus 8, as long as you know what you're doing. You can also even get uh, level 7 versus 5, uh, depending on how well you play early on, and if you have the, the Targon stuff and whatnot. So, looks like G2 is actually going to be able to rotate now and get the bottom tier 1. Regat swapping into mid. I think that Ryze versus Aatrox is uh, actually a, a really good matchup. I think Urgot mid isn't even that bad against Aurelia. Maybe the Maple should have actually been playing Urgot and then uh, Hanabi should be playing Ryze. But from what we've seen of Hanabi this tournament, he doesn't actually seem like uh, that good of a player. So it is a little bit worrying for me to see him on carry. Or like it would, it would worry me to see him on a carry champion like Ryze.
And wait, did he just miss ult? Whoa! Wait, no, this is a terrible trade by Perks. Wait, Perks hand shook a trade he should have lost. See, when I when I see stuff like that, it makes it makes me worried, you know. Like we're 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 seeing. Now I don't even know why the teleport. I mean, uh, he hand shook he hand shook a trade. No. Like, uh, no, he doesn't, like, I, I really don't think that's a dodge. I really don't think, I think it's an unintentional dodge. Like, I'm sorry. No. It's not a dot. Hold on. No, he was in animation before Urgot is. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Oh no, he's not. Uh... I don't think it's intentional, though. Also, Hanabi doesn't have to shoot R this early. He can he can get it to a. Uh, I don't know, man. If he want, I don't know. I mean, there's so many things that would suggest that it's not a dodge. Like his skill usage, every, like. Uh, it's so thin. Cause you have to imagine that Q's being spammed. Because Aurelia doesn't go for an auto. It's not like her auto is canceled into the Q. That's what you would assume when the stun's done. See? But, I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's move on from this. Okay. So right now, G2 is really, really far ahead. Um, they have anti, like, Flash Wolves has anti-synergy, uh, in some of their lanes, and with the Mordekaiser having fell behind, it's really, really problematic, especially because G2 looked like they're in the driver's seat in bottom. Also, Betty's building a fucking proto belt, so I'm, I'm, I'm losing a lot of hope here. This is, this is like watching, uh, ADCs in NA and EU that wasn't named Whippo try to play, uh, like top and mid lane champions. This is this is exactly what this is. G two is just wrecking Flash Wolves. They just seem so much more comfortable with everything that they're doing. What? Okay, so they're chasing Sword Art, and Sword Art's trying to get the execute, and he ends up getting it. Okay. So just taking another look at the replay. I mean, this is all really good. G2 just gets... 
I didn't actually get bottom tier one turret. So Aurelia in this situation shouldn't even go to top lane. Aurelia should just rotate to dragon. You just rotate to dragon and you five man party Drake. That's all that you have to do right now. Thank you. Thank you, Perks. Thank you, Mr. Perks. Just please go to the dragon. All right. Ignore the Rift Herald. It doesn't actually mean anything. You just have to get the dragon. Just take a team fight. Wits and Aurelia first item I actually think is, is really good. They have so much magic damage on the enemy team, the attack speed's really good, and you end up giving uh, Hyarnan basically true damage. Look at Ryze's magic resist. Some people, like, the, I, I, was, I was one of the first people that talked about Wits End on ADCs um, a year and a half ago. Look at Ryze's uh, magic resist, 34, okay? Uh, Hyarnan already has 18 pen, right? Aurelia can give him plus 30, all right? He can have 48 pen. So Ryze is going to get true damage. Ryze is almost going to get true damaged by the Wits End auto attack. In addition to that, he's going to get true damaged by Gragas. He's going to get true damaged by, uh, by Heimerdinger. And he's almost going to get true damaged by even fucking Alistar. Like, let that sink in. That's so scary. And then, uh, in addition to this, other members of Flash Wolves. Let's see if they show them. Let's see if I can get uh, another avatar to appear. Please show me something. Okay, there was a Talia. Hold on. See? 33? True damage. So, true damage, true damage. I'm pretty sure true damage. So, these three targets are being true damaged right now. Oh, well, no, 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 no. Mordekaiser has uh, Mercury Treads. He's not getting true damage, but he is taking quite a beating. It's really, it's really good. Corrupting Pot true damage. Like, this is all really good. This is very, very intelligent itemization out of G2. It's very, very good. I like the boots, uh, boots that Yankos went for. I like that he went for the magic penetration. I like that he's going AP Gragas. Because basically, if, if Mordekaiser falls in a fight, yeah, Mujin can be a problem, but they have Aurelia and they have Aatrox. So it, it's very easy to get onto Maple and Mujin. Um, th there's not sufficient amounts of peel or disengage from Flash Wolves outside of the Tom Kench W. And G2 also has the Infernal Drake again. Oh, we're most at 4k viewers again. Thank you guys for all being here. I thought that today would be a little bit more boring because there's no Cloud9, no Team Liquid. I'm looking f I'm fucking looking forward to 24 hours from now. I am so excited. Oh, my, my screen is showing 3.6. My screen is showing 3.6. Not even 24 hours. Alright. Anyways, so right now, if you're G2, let's just talk about this. Same thing that we talked about with Caitlyn. I like how they have Aurelia up in top lane. I like how they're bringing four members into mid lane. Because what you're doing is, is you're basically making it so that Mujin, Maple, and Betty can't get solo XP. And even though Betty, if he ends up getting the last hits, gets a little bit of XP, you're stunting the base scaling of so many of their important champions. And you're allowing one of your most important champions, who is the direct access to the backline of Flash Wolves, which is Mujin and Maple, to get all the base scaling and get that solo XP. And I think that people really underrate uh, base, base scaling because of how much HP and resistances and everything that it really grants you it's making it so problematic the fact that mordekaiser is behind in levels from heimer is such a fucking nightmare and the infernal drake obviously for for g2 um a little bit unfortunate that aurelia is going like utility aurelia so she's not getting as much you know bang for her buck out of the infernal drake but the other members like gragas who's going ap and whatnot i, I don't like that he's looking like he's potentially uh going into a defensive item, I would like to have actually just seen him go like Abyssal Mask. I think Abyssal Mask on Gragas would probably be better as a second item than anything else. Maybe maybe he can still end up going into that. I guess that uh, this can go into Negatron and this can go into Catalyst. Maybe he does go Abyssal Mask. I think that that's the correct item to go right now. Because he's going to be up in their face as uh, Hyarnan is basically playing from the back line. So he's going to definitely amplify the damage for perks and himself. No, Proto, Proto Belt on Mordekaiser is really bad.
actually use the Heimerdinger ultimate to try to get the turret. I don't agree with that. I think that's being a little bit too rushy, but it doesn't really matter. Hanabi doing what he does best. Okay, that was that was a missed ultimate. That's actually really sad. That's really sad. They do they do get some really key summoner spells though out of flash wolves. They get the turret, they back off. That could have been better for G2, but a little bit sloppy mechanically. I'm not gonna credit with flash wolves with anything there. D2 is just dismantling them right now. This is really, really good. I love the itemization out of them, except for the fucking Spectre's Cowl, but you know what? I'm going to let that slide. Raffle, where's those subs? Don't think I don't see you in chat. Come on, you're being immortalized in a VOD on YouTube. Think about it. That's at least worth 100. Alright, and so right now, I mean, G2 should just be content to actually take the game a little bit slower. Uh, Perk should not be handshaking any of these fights. He also shouldn't have been looking for it. Even if he goes down, he brought four members top. This does mean that G2 is absolutely going to get Infernal Drake. And you can see Flash Wolves being a little bit desperate. They're making a ping onto the Baron. They do not have a Mountain Drake. No Leandries on Mordekaiser either. So this is, uh, like, they, they have immunity against it, um, given that... Uh, Mordekaiser's W, but oh, this is a this is a really bad fight for oh wow never mind Maples in the back line oh but Heimerdinger okay now now the positioning is really good yet again for G two this is really good wow that's really unfortunate they get the flash auto Mugen that was really really well fought by Chu G two I really do have to give them credit hopefully we get another replay that that fight was looking like it was potentially going to be so good but then they managed to get themselves into a really good concave yet again and they were able to turn it on Flash Wolves. Alright, double Infernal Drake. Let's just take a look at what that one was worth. He got 20 AP off that. So that's an amp tome. <clears throat> but it's going to keep ramping the longer that the game goes. Alright. Like, look at this fight. So I do think that, um, I think Heimer shouldn't be right here. I think Heimer should actually be further down, uh, especially because he does have flash. Um, so I don't like, I don't like the angle that Hernan's taking. And then you see that Wonder, uh, he gets the knock up, he goes on to Hanabi, and then Maple wasn't able to do anything, and then Wonder's peeling back. This is all really good. Turning could have gone up to here a little bit quicker, but this is all fine. That definitely was a very well-coordinated team fight by G2. And if you look at Flash Wolves, we'll just look at that one more time. And so they're starting the Baron, and they're getting ready to turn. They have Perks' Ghost, Brother Perks. I don't, know, I don't know what Sword Art's doing. I, I really, really don't know what Sword Art's doing. Hold on, let me, let me take a look. No. Wadded, Wadded should have just been eaten. Like, they, they should recognize that it's already a 6v4. He should just eat Wadded and hold him in his mouth as long as he can. And then just throw him backwards. Because without the Alistar, Flash Wolves actually will be able to, to take this fight a lot better. I have no idea what Sword Art's doing. He is so concerned with trying to use his W. He absolutely does not need to do this. It was really, really poor fighting out of the Tom Kench. Wadded should not have been allowed to live. And if Wadded, if Wadded actually goes down and then Wonder commits the same way that he did, it allows all of the carries to focus on Wonder so much easier. Because you have to look at Wadded. 
and know that he never should probably get the knockup. Like the tongue and tongue and auto should already go off. Tongue and auto should have already gone off, right? Oh, what the fuck? All right, watch, 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 watch. Tongue and auto already. He should never. He should be eaten out of his knockup. And if he's eaten out of his knockup, then Yankos is just committing all into the carries. And yeah, Alistar can uh, he can press R and come out of the belly, but it's still just like it, it, it's better than what Sword Art's doing. Thank you, Rapple, for gifting uh, 40 tier 1 subs to uh, Twitch chat. Rapple is the sugar, da sugar daddy of the world. Thank you for another 20 subs, Rapple. You are being immortalized right now. 60 subs today. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Never lucky. <laughs> All right. God bless. All right. So at this point in the game, double infernal drake, a mountain coming up next for G two, and I think that's actually the best uh, RNG dragon that they could have gotten. Okay, wonder. All right. Oh, we gifted a hundred? Holy crap. Rapple, you've gifted like 300 subs. Wait. You've, you've, you've donated like $1,800. Or like almost 2,000. What the hell? Rapple, you can't just buy, but what the hell? Rapple, you're not my dad, you can't just buy my love. Jesus. Very grateful for you, Rapple, you're interrupting the VOD review. You're, you're, you're stealing the show, Rapple. Okay, I lied, you definitely can buy my love. If you catch my drift. All right. So anyways, at this point, all G22, <clears throat> all G2 has to do is uh, you have Aurelia. Oops, no, I don't like that Aurelia is hard chugging this. Let's take a look. Let's go back. See this? There's already some excess minions, I think, here. And even if there's not, you just auto one or two minions and then Aurelia pass down into mid. The other uh, three members move up into mid and escort these members back, and then you go down into bottom lane, you group with Atrox, and you get the bottom tier two turret. You break off, you reset. Gragas or Yankos goes back, he eats the Scuttle Crab, he eats the Gromp, eats the Wolves, leases the blue, Perks comes down, gets the blue, Gragas recalls, and now you path back into mid. One of the members uh, goes into top lane, so then you end up doing a 1-4-0, and the reason that you do this is because it's assumed that one of the members of Flash Wolves will have gone top to answer the slow push that was created by Aurelia just a few moments prior, and then that wave is coming into top lane against uh, eaten by a carry, and then via the 1-4-0, uh, you then uh, convert into a 5-0-0, and then you raise the top tier 2 turret, and then at this point, uh, Mountain Drake is still alive on the map, and then depending on uh, what exact position that you end up having and what type of resistance Flash Wolf tries to throw at you, there's an opportunity to either just go like this, um, or there's the opportunity to just back up and concede a Mountain Drake um, in exchange for getting the two turrets, because it's not the end of the world. So it doesn't look like that's actually what G2 is doing. Mountain Drake is up now in a minute and a half. So all that G2 should actually do is just control vision around Baron. 
and then eventually capture the mountain drake. And then with the mountain, oh, actually, they're just going to go for the Heimerdinger special. The Dinger. I really like what G2 is doing here. Oh, they just go right in and completely gimp Sword Art. There goes Aurelia. Ultimate on perks. Doesn't really matter. The team composition of Flash Wolves just doesn't have any of the items that they need. They're so far behind G2, and obviously the double Infernal Drake is just making it so much more difficult for them to ever take a fair fight. That's probably going to just be Baron now for... Yeah, that's Baron for G2. Doesn't even matter. I like what Maple's doing. He's trying to attack Baron without attacking Baron. Flash Wolf's trying to pick up the Mountain Drake. So they're, they're at least going to get that. They get some CS. And they're going to be able to clear out all of the minions. So now G2 is actually only going to have one wave per lane to push with. And it looks like G2 is actually setting their eyes on bottom tier 2. So even though they're setting their eyes on bottom tier 2, I... Uh, like wonder like i don't know what the hell wonder is doing hold on what the fuck's he doing he, wonder should just be in mid lane they should they should execute a 140 into a 005 into capturing inhibitor into recall and then after the recall you end up doing a 140 into a 500 and then you crack up to this turret and then while you're doing the 500 you have one member break off into mid and then thus you're a four, uh, 410 you escort this to the turret and then eventually because you have the super minions down in bottom and the close proximity to it you then wrap on to a 050 i don't like these Lost opportunities. I'll have to think about modding Rapple. I would do a VOD review with Medios if he wanted. So right now they're doing a 113. Um, 113, I like it's okay, uh, but because G2 is actually so strong, they should try to induce Flash Wolves into trying to fight because it's already going to be guaranteed that. G2 should not be able to end the game on this Baron alone. And even though they're getting chip damage on all of the inhibitor turrets, I think uh, per, uh, giving uh, Flash Wolves the opportunity to panic and then try to go into them would be just better. Um, because they, they realistically should not be able to end the game on just this Baron. Although it looks like, never mind, maybe, maybe when that happens, actually, Jesus Christ. Alright, hold on. How did this just happen? Okay, they went they, they, they went for perks and maple misposition, so it allows them to dive. I mean, no matter what, they would give up two turrets. But I don't think that Flash Wolves actually had to handshake the fight. Regardless, though, I mean, that, that's just massive amounts of damage coming out from Aurelia. What's the base level difference? Oh, two base level difference in mid lane. They can achieve they can achieve the same thing without the requirement of flash wolves having to make a mistake like in in, in this specific situation maple mispositions and perks is really quick to punish so that's really fucking good um my only gripe is if, if flash wolves doesn't do this yes they get this turret 
right here. They get this and they get this turret. Um, but Flash Wolves doesn't have to handshake a team fight. So they, they'll, they'll definitely get this inhibitor and then they'll try to rotate up. But then there's a better arc for Flash Wolves right here to defend from. Yeah, Ur Urgot, Hanabi, Hanabi is quite, he's, yeah, Hanabi misses every ult. It actually would matter here too, because perks would, perks would go down so much sooner and Hanabi would be able to rejoin his team. But instead he's so preoccupied with trying to get up there. Let's just take a look. This is just really sad. And Ryze ends up dying. I don't know if uh, Tom Kench could have held him in his stomach longer. It wouldn't really matter, um, but it, it does suck that Hanabi misses his ult. Yeah, he shoots it into the Zanyas. But he's shooting it, he's shooting it early anyway. I, I, I'm really, I'm really curious, like, th this looks definitely much more like a, jo uh, a dodge. This definitely looks a lot more like a dodge than the top lane Urgot thing. Perk played really good, he did. That was pretty much it. That was really good. I mean, they, they rotated yet again really well with the Heimerdinger. It's the cleanest uh, play. It continues to be the cleanest play I've seen from a Western team. They just seem so comfortable and they understand how to move with this champion around the map. It makes me think that they should be able to do similar things with like Caitlyn. It's just really sad that she's not in the meta. So that's it for this VOD review.